right, SD cards clear for the audio listeners. You know we gotta represent for the audio listeners, man. I just cleared the audio from last week for y'all. But all you guys that listen over on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, appreciate you guys, man. You are the true OGs of this shit, man. Because I don't really think people watch podcasts too much anymore. I mean, my bad, my bad. Listen to podcasts anymore. I think more more people like actually seeing a person talking shit rather than listening to them now. That's why I was so hesitant to do the video aspect of the train wreck podcast, the old podcast that I used to do. I, I still don't want to do video, to be honest with you, but I was adamant on not doing video, not doing visuals, because I, I, I wanted us to build a fucking audio listenership. I think advertisements come uh, just as fast as they do when you're doing audio and video. I mean, podcasting wasn't always some video shit. This is, uh, it became necessary almost over the past couple years. Um, before, I remember where you, you, you didn't even really need to have any mic set up or sound effects or anything like that. You could literally be entertaining, like on some ham radio shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could be on that. You could be sitting in the basement fucking just, just getting your shit off. Whatever's fucking with you that day, just vent. That's what I use this for at this point. I recap my week, and then I end up talking about some shit that uh, that I thought was important throughout the week. And hopefully it's entertaining for you guys, man. That's what I aim to do. Uh, that's, that's like number two. Number one, this is like a uh, like a therapy session almost. Like I said, I vent on here. And then two, I'm aiming to entertain. Because I do want to make this my uh, my profession. Well, it, it is at this point. I mean, it's, it's still passion because I, I haven't really made any money off of it yet. So uh, it's still a hobby at this point. But I do want to make this shit my profession to where uh, it's not the only thing I'm doing. But if I'm just doing this, I'll be cool. Like, I don't have to worry about working or anything like that. Which I still want to do other shit outside of the podcast. Don't get me wrong. Like, you can't be no one-trick pony. Like, you got to have multiple streams of income. And um, I saw somewhere that uh, one of the one of the highest-grossing podcasts at least makes a million dollars a year. So I got to find where they're getting that money from. And I I know where it all starts. You need to build a fucking audience. So that's that's what I'm in the process of doing right now is building a fucking audience a loyal viewership, fanship. Um, I got to find something to call you guys that tune into the podcast every week. Because uh, the word fans kind of has a negative connotation on it. When people fan out, it's usually some uh, some girly shit. Niggas, p- bitches passing out and shit like that. Like, you ever see um, Michael Jackson's Super Bowl performance? You know what I mean? Like, like that. That's, that's people fanning out. Like, their reaction... That's fanning out, so that 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 has a negative connotation to it. So most people are not fans; they're supporters, more so than anything. With that being said, make sure you guys subscribe on YouTube, hit the bell icon, crack the Liberty Bell for me, so you can be notified anytime I upload a YouTube video. Man, that's very important because uh, the current CEO of YouTube, Susan something, I can't pronounce her last name. But um, it's like Nazi Germany over here on this side of things. People that speak their mind, people that are opinionated, people that curse a lot, you know. Your content doesn't really uh, fit the algorithm. If you don't know about the algorithm, it's, uh, it's basically a computer system that uh, collects all the data of uh, information from what you guys are watching on YouTube and... They forced feed that shit to you. What that algorithm also does, it it um it um it recognizes, it identifies profanity, it identifies phrases, it ident- it's it's so crazy, yo. It's it's a it's a very smart computer. It identifies strong opinions that that they might not want to be out there. You know what I mean? So why would I be pushing content that doesn't fit my agenda? I mean that's just that's just how things are working over here on YouTube, man. So 
But this is the only medium that I can, re- besides Instagram, you can't really put a whole podcast out on Instagram. If I could, I would. But uh, that and YouTube is really the only mediums that you can grow an audience with for as far as visuals. Like, there's not really that many, uh, I mean, unless you go to paid content, but then again, you got to have that audience. Like, you can't start making paid content and you don't have an audience to sell it to. I mean, nobody wants the shit, so why are you selling it? You know, so you got to create that demand. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I know what I'm doing, man. I don't I don't want people to feel like like I don't I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm very aware of what's happening in the podcast industry and the media industry, entertainment shit like that. I'm I'm very aware of what's going on, and um, certain things I'm not gonna do. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about certain things that I don't care about to get views. I won't do that. I know y'all probably realize on this podcast, I miss a lot of shit. Like, I I forget a lot of shit to talk about during the week. Um, Some shit that might be very important to y'all. And that's because I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be brutally honest with y'all. That's as bluntly as I can put it. I don't be giving a fuck about a lot of shit. So that's that's something else that I struggle with doing this podcast by myself, man. Uh, My co-hosts, they had different interests. Like, um... Mark was, he was into all the stupid nigga music. He loved that shit. So y'all got that aspect of the, of the, of the, uh, of the music industry from Mark. I'm never going to really be talking about that kind of shit, to be honest with you. Unless one of them niggas gets arrested for some crazy shit. I'm probably never going to talk about them. And it's not that I'm perpetuating violence for black people, because that's what that sounds like. That That sentence that I just said, that's what that sounds like. That's the only time I hear about these niggas is when they doing some shit like that, some dumb shit. I don't care for their music, but whenever I'm on social media, the only time I see these niggas is when they getting arrested. Mm-hmm. And let's get into that, man. This is going to be the little prelude to the to the episode, right? All of the, all of the dumbass niggas that got an opportunity to uh to get out get out the get out their situation get out their fucked up ass environment that got them uh making all that crazy ass music that y'all love Inst- instead of doing that they stay there man and they keep going back and there's nothing wrong with that if you're doing good in the community there's nothing wrong with that but if you fucking the community up still and then, and then making songs about it that's not cool. That's not good at all, man. You, Cause you got that opportunity to make it out, and you just still doing dumb shit. One of the uh, biggest criticisms that I have of a rapper is uh, Kodak Black. I love Kodak Black's music, but he seems to always find himself in a jam, man. And it's like, how avoidable are these situations? You're a rapper making. What I think to be great money is definitely is definitely more than uh, the average person. And for the amount of work that you're doing, well, I don't I don't know how much work work this nigga puts in, but the amount of work that you put into your music, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe 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 he does work hard at his music. I I love Kodak Black's music. I just think he does a lot of dumb shit that gets him in dumb situations. I don't know, man. I'm on my fucking soapbox this episode, but uh. I just don't like to see wasted opportunities, man. Cause it's people out there that would get in that position, and I'm I'm say me for example, not even rapping. Even though I think I'd be a great rapper, I used to want to be a rapper, but then uh, my sister destroyed my dreams. So I'm hard on rappers now. You know, that's just me. Uh. Yeah, I used to have this little rhyme book, and um, I don't know what we was arguing about. She got mad, and she ripped it up, and uh, all my passion went out the window from there. I no longer wanted to be a rapper after that. Those was my rap dreams. I was young as shit, too. I'd probably been nice by now if I'd have pursued that shit. Just like anything else, man. You work hard enough at it, you're going to be great at it. Trust me. Um, But, yeah, wasted opportunity. That's what I'll... That's what I'll and this little interlude, prelude with, um, I mean, Kodak, I'm, I used him as an example, but he's still at the top of his game. 
currently, right? Uh, I don't know if he's the, he's not the the hottest rapper out, but you know he can still get a bag off of his music. So just put all the dumb shit to the side, man. And this go, I, I'm just using Kodak as an example because that's one of the only stupid nigga rappers that I listen to. I don't listen to much of y'all music, but as far as y'all go, I I kind of kind of only listen to Kodak for the most part when it comes to that shit. And I'm sure, I'm sure I probably listen to a, a couple more. It, it depends on who you consider stupid niggas. What I consider a stupid nigga to be is uh, exactly what I just said about Kodak Black. You have the opportunity to be great, and you still decide to do stupid shit. You know, you you live in you live in a fucking dream. You you making money off of your passion. That's what everybody wants to do out here. That's what everybody is looking for. I know that's what I'm looking for. You know, and I hate to see somebody get in that position, and then and then just it seem seemingly at every chance they get try to fuck it up for themselves. And I'm passionate about this because. I'm trying to get to a point where I'm trying to make money off of my passion. And I'm not going, I'm, I wouldn't even think to fuck that shit up once I get it. Once I get this shit, one, I'm going to be cheap. I'm going to be tight with mines. And uh, two, I'm going to be out the way. <laughs> me? I'm not going to be seen unless I'm doing this. But yeah, man, let me play some music. Let's get into this episode. It is about that time. What the fuck y'all know about this, man? Stop fucking playing with me, man. Stop fucking playing with me. Mad Liberator, Deaf Operator, that was Most Deaf, Auditorium, featuring Slick Rick, what the fuck y'all know about that, one more bone. See that's, that's the cloth that I'm cut from, that right there is why I listen to the kind of music that I listen to. All the time. Uh, that is a childhood favorite of mine. Riding in my Uncle Zach's car. I love when he threw that shit on. The beat is nasty. <laughs> you know what I mean? The lyrics is raw. Uh, go check that out. Most Deaf Auditorium. Um, check out Most Deaf if you don't know about Most Deaf. Uh, I don't really know too much about Most Deaf. I'm actually going to go uh, do some digging my damn self. But... For some reason, that song just popped into my head the other day, and I, I threw it on, and I said, yeah, I'm going to start the podcast with that this week. Damn. I just got all this fucking ash on my pants, man. Let me put this shit out. I don't smoke on this show. I used to smoke throughout the whole episode on Trainwreck, and still, and, and the episode still be fire. You know what I mean? But we're not going to do that over here. We trying to get sponsors. You know I mean all the sponsors hit me up. I don't know why I did a round of applause for for sponsors, but man, it won't hurt, would it? Uh, welcome back to the dopest podcast. We on episode nine in this bitch. Are you not entertained? <laughs> What you are now witnessing are just my thoughts, right or wrong. Uh, thank you guys for um, everybody that tunes in every week. Uh, make sure you leave a like on the YouTube video before you dip out. You know that helps the algorithm and shit. Um, and if you're new here, hit the subscribe button because there's much more of this to come. Uh, I'm actually planning on having some some guests on the, on the podcast soon 
I went and featured on a podcast last night. That was a that was I had a ball actually. That was that was very fun. Shout out to um yeah, shout out to uh One Fam Radio for having me on. I threw them up on my Instagram. You know, so go check them out. I don't know when the episode's going to drop, but as soon as it drops, I'll let you guys know where to check it out. We had a great conversation on there. We talked about uh some shit that I really don't talk about on here. We talked about some relationship shit. Um talked about Father's Day. Uh some shit that I wasn't planning on talking about this week. A lot of shit that I wasn't planning on talking about this week, I talked about on there. So go check them out over there, man. I was very candid. I'll say that. But yeah, it's the creator of dope shit. The pro waiver. Even though I'm I'm starting to get into hats now. So the waves is getting covered up. I don't know if hats work as do rags, but if so, that's tough. I don't even wear my do rag anymore. I'm not gonna hold y'all, man. Uh I lied to you not. I put this on whoever, whoever's grave, you mean, I do not wear a do-rag anymore. You wouldn't be able to tell from uh from the seasickness you catch by staring at my dome. But I don't I don't wear a do-rag anymore. I don't wear a sue rag. I don't wear none of that shit. You know, cause I be I be coming in the house and I be tired from the day. You know, I be wore the fuck out. You know, I, 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 I come in and putting on a do-rag is the least of my fucking worries. You know, I'm, I'm editing podcasts and shit like that. I don't, I don't really have time. Like, putting on a do-rag don't fit into my schedule. I'm going to be honest with you. For all of you dudes out there with those little ripples in your head, there's barely waves. You know when you skip rocks and shit like that? Y'all got the little ripples in your head, man. Um, y'all, gotta, y'all, got, y'all need sue-rags plus the do-rag. I mean, y'all struggling, man. I don't know what it is on my hair. I mean, I've been brushing since a since a youngin. Um, I, I I've been on this wave shit for a while since uh, elementary school. I remember in elementary school waves was this shit. Waves was never not the shit. Waves always looked sturdy. Even even that little uh, y'all remember that era when people was was growing their hairs out and shit. Like people wanted that wanted that uh that uh like 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 the uh the, the blow the blown out look like the uh the nappy disheveled look. I I never I never grew my shit out, man. I, I always stuck with the wave. Waves is always gonna be the wave for me. I think waves is always gonna be the wave in general. Bitches is always gonna love the waves, man. Uh once once they in there, once they really in there, they in there. Like I don't gotta I don't gotta brush my hair no more. I don't gotta do shit, man. And if I grow, if I was to grow my hair out, like I, I've grown my hair out probably for like a month and some change before, and my waves will be right under that shit. I mean, I, if I grow my hair out, then I'll have the ripple shit that y'all niggas be having. I'll have the ripples on top. I start growing a little fucking, uh, a little fucking curly top when my um when I grow my hair out. But uh, when I when I cut it, as soon as you cut that shit down, the waves is always gonna be right there, man. I don't really think it's too many people fucking with me on the wave tip. That's what I'm ultimately trying to say in this whole point. Uh, it's definitely no podcasters fucking with me. Most of the podcast niggas is bald. Most of the top podcast niggas is bald. We got Joe Rogan, Joe Button, boom, two bald niggas. Top of the podcast game. Yo, have y'all seen Rory and Maul's podcast? I started to watch one episode, the first episode that they put out, and um, it looks good. Uh, it sounds it sounds okay. Uh, the chemistry, um, I I can tell that those two are still kind of getting used to each other a little bit. You know, the uh, like the the jokes and shit. Not really. Uh, I mean, it's there, but it's not. It's not how comfortable they was when it was all three of those guys together. And that's to be expected. This is something new. They're adjusting. I'm sure they'll get comfortable around, like, episode 10. Around episode 10, episode 15, they'll be gelling and shit. Uh, sorry to use the word gelling when talking about two guys, but, you know. 
that was a very um that was a white thing to say. That sounds like some shit that uh when you when when you, when you just start a new job or some shit like that and the manager comes up to you and I just want to see if you were gelling with everybody else and want to see how the work environment was for you like yeah that was that was some white shit to say. I sound like a fucking general manager or something like that of a of a uh, general manager of a Walgreens or something. Wanted to say Walmart, but they don't give a fuck in any of those places. A huge ass superstore. Mostly everybody that goes in there is stealing. And um you may have that one employee that's very attentive, but uh for the most part, you can get your shit off in them big superstores like Walmart and shit like that. Um, I don't really see I don't really ever see no managers and no big superstores like that. And I think that's good. I think I think reparations is being able to steal from uh stores like that. Being able to get your shit off like that. Like as long as Target and Walmart keep allowing people to steal from the self checkout, um, that might just be our reparations, man. We might just have to uh get that shit up. You know? Stop stop looking at it that way that like the government gotta give it to you directly um start robbing the white man piece by piece little by little you know take from his stores and you can get what you need for free for the free that's reparations man that's my theory being able to steal from target and walmart that's reparations now not technically because everybody can uh take take part in that you know but uh I get it where I can, man. I don't believe they're going to give us any money. You know, you got to get it yourself. <laughs> you got to get it yourself. They're not going to give us anything. You know, everybody's thinking, are there still any reparations groups out there? Like, like, um, like really advocating for this shit? I know they started bringing it up in a presidential election, but come on now. You know by now these motherfuckers are lying about everything. They're not telling the truth about anything up there. You don't know what the fuck is going on. Most of you don't know what the fuck is going on. I barely know what the fuck is going on. And I'm actually kind of into this shit a little bit. And I couldn't imagine some of the nasty shit that's happening. Like, as nasty as I think of these people, it's I know it's much crazier and nastier shit happening. I can't even think of it, though. I know for a fact. It's just because my mind don't work like that. I can't even think of some of the evil shit that they be doing. I haven't read from from most of the evil books that they've read from. So I, that's not even my train of thought. But I know what's happening. I got that feeling. I got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night. That tonight's going to be a good, good night. Yo, how great was life when that song was out? Ooh-hoo. I was a kid. Tonight was probably going to be a great night, most likely. And a great night for me as a kid didn't take much. All it had to be Friday night, you know, because no school the next day. So that's the beginning of a great night. Um, we order out, and I'm playing a video game all night. That When that song was out, that was my great night. I mean, I wasn't worried about no bitches at all. I wasn't worried about no drugs. I can't speak for everybody else in my age group at the, around that time, but around that time, I wouldn't worry about no nothing but the video game. I know, a lot of people jumped off the porch early with the drug shit, and I don't even think it's it's to their own fault. You know, a lot of people in my generation, uh, we was the the ADD ADHD generation, and some parents fell they 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 fell for the for the for the for the bait, man. They let them kids take that fucking Ritalin, you know, spaced them out, zombied them. They in school fucking zoinked and shit. They recommended that shit for me. My my, my school, uh, when I was in elementary school, I think I even got tested to, uh, to be put in, in, in like a, um, a special class or some shit like that. I remember my, my whole class went to the fucking zoo one time and, I got left behind. I was sitting in special ed all day. But but given to that 
that was some of the most fun I ever had in school in my life, in special ed class. That was fucking fun. Like, we was in there, we was making cupcakes. We was we fucking, them cupcakes was banging, too. We wasn't really doing nothing too too crazy. I wasn't stressed in there. I had a ball. I had a ball. I probably wouldn't, um, yeah, fuck them niggas. Fuck them niggas at the zoo. I don't know if they was testing me for that class more so than I probably did some bad shit and couldn't couldn't go to the zoo. But uh I had I had the most fun ever in elementary school chilling chilling with the special ed class. We was chilling, we was on ice. Most of them kids in special ed class, I mean it's it's a few that, that really need that that extra help. But for the most part, them ain't nothing wrong with them fucking kids, man. Ain't nothing wrong with them kids. I mean, they perfectly fucking fine. They just need some talking to. They need a little bit of straightening. At least the special ed class that I was in, man. I mean, I mean, I don't remember any of them. I, I don't remember any of their names or anything like that. But I remember that day, my class went to the zoo, and I was chilling with them. And I had, I had a fucking ball. But I say that to say, all the people that did take that riddle and shit, or any medication for that matter, um... Recommended by the by the by the school. You you're taking drugs. Recommended by a fucking school. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. And and then you go to the doctor's office and he trying to prescribe you some shit too. You know you're not safe from that shit. And, and now they they popping uh fentanyl laced thirty milligram Percocets. Now that's what's going on. Now you uh now you out in the street stripping out. You got all your clothes off and shit. You looking like a nut. I mean, so it's a... What do you call that? What do you call that shit? I don't know. Trickle down effect. There you go. Speaking of trickle down, because you could not hear that shit in the, in the Hillary Clinton versus Trump election. You know, I'll get to that. I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. Let's start with some light shit. Um, we'll start with the uh with the bum ass Sixers. Oh no, let me play my um let me play my NBA music real quick. I like that. Hold up, hold up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's recap tonight's highlights. Could you imagine if you saw fucking uh, Stephen A. or uh, Skip Bayless, um, or one of them niggas, taking a sip as the NBA music comes on and they're on TNT and or ABC or NBC. I think that was NBC. And they're just getting fucking plastered. About to give you all the highlights and shit. I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about, but let's get into the NBA. Uh, yeah, these bum ass Sixers, man, they lost. Game seven, they lost. I know I'm late on this shit, but um, I'm not saying nothing new here, and that we need to uh, get Ben Simmons the fuck out of here. Get these Australians off my team. These punk pussy ass Australians. Get them the fuck off this team, man. The punk ass nigga scared to dunk now, scared to lay the ball up. You wanna pass off the Thibel, who can't even draw a fucking foul on a layup. These punk pussy ass Australians. Get them the fuck off the Sixers, man. I want them gone. Man, don't try to blame this shit on Doc Rivers, man. Easily, if 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 Ben Simmons hits his free throws and scores as much as he did during the regular season, we win. We beat the fucking Hawks. We beat the Hawks. Y'all faults. And JoJo, you not you not you not out on you not on off the hook for this either. 
you fucked up one of them games too. You fucked up a couple of them games. But I will give you that you was playing with a meniscus tear. You got that, big guy. Get better. Get well. Don't even practice right now. Heal the fuck up, man. We don't need you falling all around and holding your knee next season. Man, cut that shit out. Cut all that punk shit out. Heal up. Don't play no more until you fucking ready. Uh, a, a summer should be enough, I would think. I'm not a doctor, but I would think. But you're not off the hook either, for the most part, going 0-12 that one night. That was fucking terrible. Shitty. But Ben, Ben Simmons, you have not been playing at, at, your, at your highest potential throughout this entire playoffs, man. And that game seven, you showed your true colors in that shit. You showed your true Australian colors. What's the colors of their flag? I think it looked like the British flag. Australia. No, because they're... I think a lot of them are British exiles. I believe... I heard this. This this is uh, from a while ago. I believe um, a long time ago, or maybe not too long ago. I'm not sure. I'm not a historian either. But... I believe that um, the British used to exile their prisoners to Australia. You know, the UK. I heard that. And that would make sense if you were locking a lot of fucking people up like they do here in the United States. The UK isn't that big. It's a small island, you know, in comparison to other countries. It's a small island. Uh, I think Madagascar is bigger than, well, everything in Africa is bigger than, you know, Europe and North and South America and shit like that. I believe you could fit it all in Africa, you know, if if you don't look at a, a racist map. Um, and I still believe the earth is flat at this point. I haven't gotten any evidence that the earth is round as of late, so I've been seeing a lot of flat earth shit. So that's that's my stance currently. But back to what I was talking about, though. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, they used to. Um, the UK is small, man, and they're running out of space, man. That's why. That's why. That's why America was born. People were over over there in, in Europe, fucking dying, you know, shitting in the streets, on some real caveman shit, on some real uh bacterial shit. So, you know, they going through that, then, oh, we running out of space. We need to find new land. The king and the queen commission the fucking boats, you know? They send them out to look for new land. They went to go look for India, I believe. Then they landed in the fucking Caribbean. You know, they started fucking all the black people in the Caribbean. All the melanated people in the Caribbean started fucking all of them. Killing them with disease and shit like that. Conquering, essentially. When I say conquering, think of rape, pillaging, plundering, disease. Think of that shit when I say conquering. That's how you conquer. Well, that's how, that's how, uh, that's how, that's how the Caucasians conquered. You know, they rip, they, 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 uh, rape, pillaged, and plundered and spread disease. Listen to what I just said. They, they was, they was on top of each other. This is this is from this is the fucking same place that brought you the plague. Same niggas that brought you the plague. This is from the same group of people. They going through that shit over there, shitting out in the streets, trash all around, they living on top of each other. So they gotta find some more land, right? They after the Caribbean, America Vespucci, I believe, finds America. They rape, pillage, and plunder, man. That's that's who I believe is my people. You know, I don't think I'm African. I believe I'm I'm native to uh, North America. Just if I look at my history, if I look at my lineage, not even too far, just at my at my grandparents and great grandparents. If I look at them, you know, they don't look African at all. Don't nobody in my family talk about Africa. My my grandpa before he passed away, he was big on Africa. He actually traveled to uh to Ghana before he passed away. 
that was uh, one of his big life accomplishments. Like he, you you couldn't stop this nigga from going to Africa, man. Stop him if you stop him if you try, man. You might die in your process. So uh, yeah, he he got that done. He had a million pictures when he got back, man. I want to travel to Africa, hey, even though I don't think I'm from there. I do want to travel to Africa because that is where the original man originated. You know, I don't, I don't, even though I don't think I'm African, I still believe the original man originated in Africa. You know, the original man and his descendants just traveled by boat over to North America, you know, way before the white people did, or the Caucasians, or the people that lack melanin, way before they did. You know, we was there already. I was talking about the NBA. How the fuck did I get here, man? Oh, yeah, get these fucking Australians off my team. Get them off. They're done out here. Four points in a game seven. Go fuck yourself, Ben Simmons. Honestly. What happened to all that explosive shit that you was going to the rim and all of that shit? I ain't saying you got to shoot. You should shoot. It would be in your best interest to attempt a fucking bucket. It'd be in everybody's best interest if you attempted a fucking bucket. You know what I mean? But no. No. What happened to all the explosive to the rim shit? They was comparing this nigga to LeBron. Fuck out of here, Ben Simmons. You bum ass. The king and the prince. The king and the prince. Get the fuck out of here, man. This nigga scared to dunk, scared to take a layup. I'm gonna pass it off. Ain't no fucking LeBron. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. I don't care who he plays for next year. As long as he's not in the Sixers jersey, that'd be fine with me. And, and you know what? I don't care if he does go somewhere and be tough. You wasn't tough for us, nigga. So fuck you. This was supposed to be the year. This was it. Ain't no LeBron in the playoffs. The West is kind of sweet. Finally. Then the Bucks eliminated the uh the Nets on some shit. I think we could beat the Bucks. Damn. You bitch ass nigga. You was a pussy, Ben. You was a pussy. Grade A pussy. Uh on to some underground hip hop shit. I saw on um on the internet, the interwebs. As a who is who says the interwebs? It's not really important. I know y'all hate when I do this shit. It's not important who says this shit, but it's gonna kill me if I don't think it was Star. I think he says the interwebs. I'm not a hundred percent on that though. But I saw on Instagram, um, Conway and Jim Jones going at it. Uh and at first, I thought it was completely random. I didn't know what the fuck is these niggas going at it for. They got music together. So, apparently, there was a list that came out, right? And it was, like, the top rappers in New York. For some reason, niggas always get hyped when somebody makes a list. Like, why do you give a fuck about this nigga's list? Eh? Is this list going to determine how much money you're going to make? No. It's just all about what people think about them. People care too much about how people view them. That's what it is, I think. Uh, but Conway was not on this list, and Jim Jones was. Um, I guess some people had a problem with that, and that was uh, 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 some 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 a conundrum happened on the internet. Or something. I don't I don't know. Um, but Jim Jones did an interview with B Dot, and they spoke about it a little bit. I'm about to play some of it. I'm all errors. I'm in right. 2021, still sizzling out here, and I still welcome anybody. So if it's Conway, then Conway, I accept any challenges. You dig? We could turn this shit into a live boxing ring. Put the booth in the middle of a boxing ring. Give the people a chance to see if we could do it on Complex. Complex can set up an elaborate place for it to be done at, and we could give them the real studio feel because people don't get the chance to get in. The uh. All right, so I forgot that he said said it like this, but I picked up on it immediately. Um, these niggas might really have some some problems with each other, cause at first, Jim Jones was talking about a fucking boxing ring, 
you know. Then he switched his shit up real fast and said, oh, we could put a fucking studio in the middle of the boxing ring. Like, what are you talking about, nigga? This old nigga going on about. I think Jimmy was drunk, maybe. Don't say he was trying to be innovative. Uh, no, nah, fuck out of here, dude. Fuck that. Fuck that. That nigga want to fight. He want to fight for some reason. Maybe niggas was getting under his skin, you know, on the internet commenting saying that Conway is better than this nigga. Which, I mean, that's, it can be argued. You know, I definitely listen to Conway more than Jim Jones. But it actually is saying something, because I listen to Jim Jones's Anything Jim Jones put out currently, I listen to. So, if we if we, if we going to go off of that, in my opinion, Conway is better than Jim Jones. We can finish this video, though. Currently is what I'm saying studio feel because people don't get the chance to get in the studio with artists if i got a chance to get in the studio with tupac and see him make some music i would it would mm. blow my mind well, this is a chance for people to do just that you dig and we could we could do it like a mayweather fight we could we could have the cameras following us to the stores to watch the drip yeah. we're going to wear to talking shit in the studio like we spawn in the gym however you want we can set it up real elaborately and turn it into a business thing do you see conway's competition who, who? conway I don't see no one as competition. I got my glasses on. What, what Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles wear? A mean dog pants. What shades. are you talking about? You heard? Besides that, he's, a, he's dope. He's talented. One right. of my favorite artists. So when I when I heard the end of that video, it's all coming back to me now because I forgot about what he said and this shit. Because it's really some old nigga rambling. I don't really give a fuck. They could the cameras could follow him around. They could wear. Uh, focus on what they wearing, what drip they about to pick out for the show and shit like that. It's this sound kind of staged, like they actually playing in the verses, like they they trying to get people hyped up, you know. Or verses this this might be how verses work. Start some controversy, right? And see how much fucking controversy you could get behind this shit. See if people give a fuck enough. Then we'll talk about doing the verses for y'all too. But if we don't see a fucking big enough controversy between y'all two, nigga, you ain't getting the verses. That might be how verses works. I could see it working like that. You know? Why would you watch a verses if people don't have a uh, a problem with each other? We all watch that Jeezy and Gucci Man verses because them niggas don't fuck with each other, allegedly. Um, what's another verses that I watch? Uh, well, Rick Ross and Two Chains, I think they fuck with each other, but um, one is obviously better than the other. So we wa we also watch verses for that reason too. We want to see total slaughters. If we if we got somebody absolutely killing this person, and we also love this person's music, of course I'm gonna tune into that shit. You know, but I, I love verses in the beginning, man. Like that Rick Ross and Two Chains shit. Like I actually made that event for myself. An event for myself. Like, I went out, I ordered some wing stop. You know, I was drunk. I was smoking. I was vibing out to that shit. Um, the, four, the one they did on 420 with uh, um, Method Man and Red Man, I was in Columbia for that shit. You know, we was watching that shit. I was drunk as shit. We was vibing and smoking and shit like that. So that was, that was fun. I was in Columbia for 420. That was a vibe out there too. Even though we ain't had the best weed, we I we know how to access the best weed out there now. I'm actually going back to Columbia in uh in August. I'm gonna hit Cartagena, Cartagena up, you know, see what see what the uh see what Cartagena is talking about. I mean, see, cause that Cartagena is different from where I went before Medellin. Medellin is like kind of in a in a. We're not very far in the center, but it's definitely further into the center of Colombia, and it's more so like a, a a rainforest more than anything. Cartagena is on uh, it's like at the edge of South America. You know, there's a beach there, so it's right it's right at the top of South America, near um near Venezuela. You know, near uh, Costa Rica, Nicaragua. All of them joints. Hey, man. That's one of the... Um, I was thinking about this the other day. That's I, I, I do like that benefit that I got from school. 
geography. You know, I know I know where a lot of places is at. Like I could t- I could pinpoint a lot of places on the map, even though in geography class, now that I'm a flat earther, um, I do believe that they, and it's no fault of theirs because they was taught lies, but they were also teaching us lies too. But I wonder how the shit actually looks, man. I I'm I'm curious to find out. Um, all will be revealed though, soon enough. Aliens are here, man. Uh, I follow this Instagram page called Aliens Are Black, and they they're constantly posting like people are f- sighting like UFOs in the sky in different countries and shit like that, and they they'll be sending them in. Um, this one lady, uh, she I think she knows something that I don't know. She's waiting for the bus near my house. And this is, I, I seen her today doing this shit, and I seen her the other day doing this shit. It's this white lady. She's covered up. Like, she knows. She knows about what's going on out here, I think. Because, you know, this sun sun been out lately. It's been hot as shit. So, white people, the sun been fucking y'all up. Y'all don't, have, y'all don't really have too much melanin. You know, so the sun, whoa. Did y'all hear that shit? Am I saying too much? Are they coming for me? They're like, yo, nigga, you saying too much. Slow down or we gonna blow this whole shit up. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, the sun be fucking white people up because they don't have melanin. So she's covered up. She got sunglasses on. She got one of those those beach hats. She wearing a mask. She got gloves on. The whole nine, man. And uh, she was, was most weird is she just be out there waving at the sky like this. Waving at the sky like this the whole time. The whole time, just standing there, waving at the sky. I was standing there watching her the other day. I was sitting in my car. It looked like she was spreading her legs a little bit, like spreading her legs for the aliens. So I think she knows something that we don't, man. Well, I know, but she knows something that most people don't. She's waving at, she's waving at something up there. I think she wants to uh I think she wants to get penetrated by an alien. You know, I definitely saw her spread her legs open. But you know, that that might just be me in my fucked up mind thinking some more fucked up shit as usual. I filter out a lot of fucked up shit that I think about though. You know, this podcast could be much more raw, but I, I, I there's no need for that. Um, in other news, did you guys see that fucking, uh, that building that collapsed in Miami? It was a condo, I mean, my bad. A condo that collapsed in my in Miami, man. Fucking three people dead and 99 missing. Um, it looks terrible. That shit look. I saw the video. Uh, viewer beware if you go look at that shit, but... If you search Miami condo collapse, you'll find that shit. And uh, it's 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 an ugly sight. Uh, some information that I found out about it, though, um, um, this is very interesting. And if you're a conspiracy theorist, this will have your mind going and shit. Uh, so the Foreign Ministry of Paraguay said six Paraguayan nationals were in the building and are still missing. Sofia Lopez, Maria, the sister of the country's first lady, her husband, Luis Petengil, their three children, and their nanny, uh, President Mario Abo Benice canceled his events due to the incident. So Paraguay, that's Paraguay. Argentina's Miami consulate said nine Argentine nationals are missing. Venezuela's ambassador to the U.S. confirmed four Venezuelan nationals are missing. And Uruguay's foreign ministry said three Uruguayan nationals have been affected, though their status is unclear. Colombia's foreign government Foreign Ministry also reported that six Colombian nationals resided 
in the building, and officials are still trying to determine whether they were there at the time of the collapse. Mm. So, being that uh, there were very important people from different countries staying there, uh, I'll say that to say, if you are a conspiracy theorist, that would have your wheels turning like, okay, um, we know that there have been events in the past where um, if somebody needs to get taken out, they're going to get taken out any kind of way. You know, the powers that be tend to not give a fuck about whether or not the public notices or not. You know, they don't care who's really affected in that situation. They'll try to be very calculated about it, but if if some fucking people were to die, innocent people, they don't really give a fuck. So with their history of doing some shit like that, we look at the to the kind of people that were in there. I don't know what relation they have to anyone, but it's very strange that a building that was up for 40 years, upright for 40 fucking years. We're not talking about, like, like buildings are built to last. You know, they're not built to, uh, to like, they, there's fucking certain codes that you got to follow. Like, it's it's not just no no regular bullshit building something like that. It's like a fucking condo that houses multiple people. Like, 99 people are missing. Like, how much of an inspection do you think has to be done on a building that holds 90? Well, I'm sure it holds more than 99 people, but it's able to fit 99 plus people. Like, I'm pretty sure you have to be up on your shit, and the building has to be fucking up to code and shit like that. I don't see how anything can slip through the cracks. Like I saw something that said that the the uh the uh the ground under the uh under the condo had been sinking for some time now. Like how could you not have fixed that? Why would they allow that to keep happening? If if this was ultimately going to be something that happened from the ground under it being weak and sinking for some time, don't you think they would they would have fixed that shit by now? You know? Like if 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 that was actually the problem, so uh, me being a conspiracy theorist, I do think that there's more to this shit, more to be revealed. To my knowledge, they're still searching for these people under under the rubble, cause you never know. I mean, it could be some some freak shit where it's a certain area under the rubble where it's very little air pockets and shit like that. You never know, man. You never fucking know, but. Um, from the, what the news was saying, it looked like it's, it's fucking pancaked. And um, I don't mean no disrespect to anybody here, but the way that that building fell, it looked like fucking 9-11. And we all know that jet fuel cannot melt steel beams. I mean, that has nothing to do with this situation, but the way that that building, that condo fell, Looks exactly like how the fucking uh, Twin Towers fell. Looks exactly like it. It fell the exact same way. If something was, if something was, let me look at this video again before I say that. Before I say what I'm about to say next. Yo, I'm looking at this video now, right? If you look, if you look in the windows of this video, you can see fucking lights flashing. In the in the window, look look at the last look at the last uh, side of that condo to collapse. You'll see a flash, a big ass flash in one of the in one of the windows, right? And then the building falls, man. Yo, they blew this fucking building up, man. Holy shit! Just look at the windows. Look at the the windows will tell it all, man. Holy shit! Wow. Wow. Wow, that's fucking crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, my wheels are turning right now. Like I told like I told y'all they would. My wheels are fucking spinning like a motherfucker. Um last thing that I want to talk about before I get the fuck out of here. Um I wanted to end on all the heavy shit. Got all the bullshit out of the way. Um I didn't really tell you guys how I was doing this week. I'm I'm fine, man. I'm 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 drinking a little bit. I said I wasn't going to drink because I've been hitting it pretty hard. 
Uh, I was drinking last night on that podcast, and I I got drunk as shit the night before, man. Went to this uh, went to somebody's birthday party. Yo, attic be fucking popping. Attic Bruin be fucking popping. Uh, we went to, we went to somebody's birthday party there. He's a regular at Attic. Fucking Ab Lava was out there. If you know about Ab Lava, um, and we left. Fucking Freeway showed up. Um, another, uh, another rapper from Philly, she's a female rapper, she's a fucking legend, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember your name, that's not my era, um, and I tend not to listen to female rappers, but, um, my, my brother O did tell me about you and shit, but, uh, who else was out there? I think, I think Cassidy showed up, I think I saw a picture with Freeway and Cassidy out there, so yeah, it was, uh, it was jumping, but I, I wasn't there when they showed up, um, but yeah, man, I got drunk as shit that night. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was on. But I had fun. I had a ball. And uh, I'm only 21 years old, man. I'm living my life. Uh, last thing I want to talk about before I get out of here, though, that's really all I've been up to. I'm still on the Turo grind. Oh, something I want to mention about Turo before I get, before I get to this last topic. Uh, if you have been following me and uh, my Turo journey, um, if you have been looking into it at all, now is the time to strike, my nigga. Uh, Turo is now offering uh, incentives because there is a, a a need for rentals and they're filling the services and shit. Uh, so they're now offering. Well, first of all, if you have if you if you if you have a car currently on Turo right now, the insurance plan that you got. Well, the split that you got right now is going to go up by 5%. So right now, I got a 75%, uh, 25% split with Turo. They take 25% for insurance and Turo fees and shit like that and promoting my car and shit like that. So they they take all of that out, right? So now with these new incentives, because more and more people are using the service, those plans that you have now are going to increase by 5%. So my 75% plan is going to increase to 80%. So I'm going to take 80% of the profit, and Turo is only going to take 20% with the same deductible. You know, my deductible is not going to change. So if anything was to happen to the car, I'm going to have the same deductible, but my profit is increasing. So that's one thing. And two, they're now offering $2,000 starting July 1st, and the the terms are going to come out on July 1st which uh, doesn't sound good. It sounds like they're trying to reel people in now, and then they're going to hit you with, oh, you got to complete 15 trips. But it sounds good so far. So starting July 1st, every car that you uh, list on Turo, you will receive $2,000 for that car, just for listing it, apparently. Now, the terms are coming. I will update you guys on the terms. But as of right now, all you got to do is list your shit, and uh, $2,000. But you'll probably have to complete some trips, I'm assuming. I don't think they're going to let you off the hook just like that. But uh, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Lastly, John McAfee. Uh, If you guys don't know about John McAfee, he is a internet web... Defender. Any anytime you uh get a, a Windows laptop, you have a one month free trial of McAfee uh defense. They, they they protect your computer, right? Um with that protection, they also have all your information. So John McAfee was a very uh knowledgeable man. He knew about a lot of shit. A lot of shit that he ain't had no business knowing about. Um, Recently, John McAfee died in a a Spanish prison cell, as as of recent. Um, Why why was this nigga in prison? That's that's that was my question when I first heard about this news. So I'm gonna look that up now with you guys. Why was John McAfee in jail? Oh, this was a apparently a very popular question on October fifth. Uh, 2020, McAfee was arrested in Spain 
at the request of the United States Department of Justice for tax evasion. McAfee was jailed in Spain uh, pending extradition to the United States on June 23rd, 2021. Okay, so tax evasion. That's why he was... Okay, so he was trying to... He, so he left the country because he owed taxes. Pay your taxes, man. What's up? I thought white people was up on their shit like that. What's going on, John? I thought white people was up on their taxes. Well, look at Donald Trump. You know what I mean? Okay, so that's that was some uh, clarification that I that I needed. So I've read somewhere that he actually was granted extradition to the United States, um, but uh, apparently that wasn't fast enough. So apparently, in in this uh, Spanish cell, he was able to access a phone. Uh, with that phone, he he would tweet shit, right? So he says, getting subtle messages from U.S. officials saying, in effect, we're coming for you, McAfee. We're going to kill yourself. We're going to kill yourself. Follow that? I got a tattoo today just in case if I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked. Check my right arm. And he has a, a tattoo that says whacked with a money sign in front of it. Swacked. I am. He's talking about his uh, prison right now in Spain. I am content in here. I have friends. The food is good. Is all is well. Know that if I hang myself, a la Epstein, it will be no fault of mine. Boom. So as soon as he said Epstein, uh, you know, I I, I kind of follow that shit a little bit. And as soon as he said Epstein, I automatically thought he got some dirt on the Clintons. Because you know I don't like that bitch. He got some dirt on a lot of these people in the government. As soon as he mentioned Epstein, I got that shit. So on June 9th, 2019, he tweeted, I've collected files on corruption in governments. For the first time, I'm naming names and specifics. I begin with the corrupt CIA agent uh, and two Bahamian officials. Coming t- Coming today... If I'm arrested or disappear, 31 plus terabytes of incriminating data will be released to the press. I wonder if any data was released in his uh, recent death. But yeah, man, they 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 off that nigga. The powers that be, they off that nigga, man. Why is it always that people that have information on on the powers that be, why they always end up suiciding themselves? Why? Why? And then I don't think people are stupid enough to not realize that. I think people just don't give a fuck. I think people are just okay with fuck it. That don't affect me. When in the long term, it does, man. These people that fucking control everything, or is, is, they controlling your life. They, they the reason that you had to wear a mask all this time. It's them. It's fucking them. This fucking coronavirus was manufactured by the powers that be. It is them. They the reason that you that you oh I gotta take this fucking mask off. The reason that you stupid motherfuckers are still wearing masks outside, you can't get that fucking programming out your head. It's them. It's them. R.I.P. to John McAfee, man. I hope that information gets out of there, gets out here, that uh, that he had. Uh, with that being said, man, I'm about to get the fuck out of here. You know, I did my thing once again this week, as I always do. I don't ever fail, you guys, do I? Um, yeah. So make sure you guys subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you uh subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Leave a five star review. We on Spotify. We on Stitcher. We all over the place, man. Check us out everywhere. And uh, I will see you guys next week. Thank you for listening. And, uh, yeah, I'm out. Peace. Oh, man. Thank you, bitch. Boy. 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 
cold blooded, cold dumb. Roll something, matter of fact, yo, fuck it. It ain't nothing but the press of a button.